Hello everybody, Elsevier once again in Bamboo Inn. Mm. All right. Today I'm going to share with you my secrets of how to make the Tenkan overtone flute. So if you haven't watched my previous videos on Tenkan, the Tenkan is a new instrument that I created. It is a hybrid of two instruments, the Japanese shakuhachi bamboo flute and the Australian Aboriginal drone pipe called the yidaki or the didgeridoo. <clears throat> so uh, these two instruments I've been playing for many years and uh, at one point I decided to fuse the two and make this. So later on we'll talk about the story of how that came to be. Anyways, today I'm going to show you how to make it and give you some measurements and uh, some ideas on how to make your own. So, hope you uh, enjoy this and follow along. Let's go. Here we go. So, before we begin anything, I like to clear space and have a good energy flowing through the uh, atmosphere. So. I have my sage that I harvested personally from Ashcroft, BC a couple of years ago and it's a beautiful plant. And we have our sage. Yes. And we spread through the atmosphere. Clearing the space. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, thanking the band of spirits for this opportunity, ancestors, let's have a good making for Tenkan. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, I work with bamboo because it's my favorite material, but you can make a ten count out of any pipe, PVC, copper, whatever, you know, a hollowed out tree, a uh, branch, but bamboo is my favorite. So that's what I'm working with today. So if you don't have any access to bamboo, yeah, go to your local hardware store and uh, get a piece of pipe that is about if you can find uh, maybe one one inch diameter should be fine but uh, my bamboo that I ideal di outer diameter for this is a 1.75 or 4 centimeter diameter bamboo this is the ideal sound I found it was great and then the wall of the bamboo if you have access looking for the wall of the bamboo at the root end is about, let's get my calipers out. So in millimeters, we're talking yeah, eight millimeter, eight millimeter thick wall, eight, yeah, about eight millimeters. At the Utaguchi, maybe about 6.5 because the walls get thinner as you go up. But make sure you have a nice bamboo that's hard. That's the key to a good sound, one of the keys. So, first we have to, uh, we're going to be making my favorite uh, size of playing. And there's a few uh, sizes. I've experimented from all the way from you know 3.6 to uh, 10.0 uh, 
a long, very, very long flutes. And this is by far my, my most favorite one, probably because of the size. It's not too long. Uh, but I do love playing the long ones, like the uh, nine footers that I make are so good. Oh, the 7.5 Tenkans are incredible to play. Hey, yeah, <laughs> just such a beautiful sound. But for convenience sake, just for everyday, uh, yeah, practical convenience sake, this four point. 0.5 is so awesome yeah it's great so i'll give you the measurements for this <clears throat> but uh so we have three bamboos here and we're gonna cut it that's the first thing you gotta find is your, uh you gotta get your bamboo then you gotta cut it to size and it's it really good to have a, a shaku i i use a shaku measure which is japanese uh measurement for shaku hachi and but um yeah centimeters is fine too whatever i'll just give give you the centimeters when you have if you have a bamboo and this is my favorite material because it's so beautiful and um revered uh throughout the world uh so you want to make sure that if philistachis uh madake style of bamboo species the root, if, the, <clears throat> if it's closer to the ground, the lip is going upwards. So you want to have the bottom of the flute down. And uh, make sure that the lip is facing up when you, do, when you uh, are making the tank on. Okay. You could flip it, but uh, I prefer the feeling of this when it's naturally going up. The bamboo so make sure that the lip is going upwards not down okay because that's how the plant grows obviously and the leaves go this way oh. so get your <clears throat> well, this is already good so I'm gonna pick just for uh, interesting uh, experience sake I'm gonna pick the hard walled bamboo. And you could tell if, uh, I guess it's through experience, uh, you can feel how hard the bamboo is. And uh, the harder the bamboo, the more brighter the sound, I find. So we're gonna, use this one because it has the hardest walled cellular structure so let's go and um, great 4.05 so this is already obviously a already made one so I use this as my template so this is a 4.05 and measure from the the utaguchi is at a node so you're gonna make sure you're there at, at a node and I make sure to have a little bit, maybe three inches above that, because I, I like to make a cap for my utaguchi with the top end of the bamboo. So if you want to do that, you can do that. And then uh, I mark it at the point where it's 4.0. Now it, get <clears throat> one of these old film strips. This is a really handy thing to have. If you still have these, kicking around your, your mom's or your grandma's list. So make a perfect circle around the mark where you want to cut the end with the celluloid negative. So you just mark Tenkan is really easy to make, which is cool. But uh, playing is a different story. <laughs> We're gonna get get into the how to play later. But it's fun it, to have one is is really nice too. Just to have around, you can use it as a walking stick. 
as you go uh, hiking, you know, and the, the cool thing is that, you know, if you're tired and you're sitting down, you can just play it. It's super cool. Okay. Now, when you cut bamboo, you want to use a hacksaw. Because of the silica content in bamboo is so high, it tends to dull uh, standard saw blades really fast. So a hacksaw is ideal for cutting bamboo because it's used for cutting, you know, metal, <laughs> uh, plastic, whatever. So, <clears throat> so get your, you got your cut line, you got your hacksaw. Now we're gonna cut the length. Do it slowly and do this kind of pull, push with your left hand and pull with your right. And then pull back and then go like that. Just follow the cut line. And then when you got your initial cut line, then you go quicker. Do a quick stroke so it doesn't jam on, on your cutting. <clears throat> These quick little strokes and you're cutting a, a very effective for cutting bamboo. But it does take a little practice to get used to. A lot of mistake is when you slip and then you s make the blade scratch the surface of the bamboo. That's not good. <laughs> So you got spend time learning how bamboo works. Slow slow. Having one of these uh, workbench type of deals for bamboo that I that I am using right now is really good. Really handy, but you could use a, a butt, you know, one of those workmates to to secure your bamboo. And to cut. There you go. You can use that as a, a really cool vase for ikebana. Look at that, cute. <clears throat> so we got our 4.0, 4.05. So now we got to look for what's called the showman or the front of the bamboo. So you always have your pencil or pen, preferably a little marker that you can wipe off. Look down the bamboo and find the point where it's naturally curving up. That's your front and it's flat. Ideally it's flat. That's the front of your bamboo. Okay, now with your eye, you can see the center and mark the center of the bamboo with your pen. That's very important. You can see the, the center very easily. <clears throat> so now that we got our you can eyeball the center of the bamboo, but if you are not confident by your eye, you can uh, do a <clears throat> truri technique where you get a piece of string like this uh, and then you use chalk and uh, make the chalk on the string. Okay. And we don't need it through the whole flute, right? Just the top, because that's where the finger holes go.
So I can hide teeth on the bottom, but the holes in the butt. Then condoms on the top. So you give a piece of tape. Your center. You need to know the center because that's where you put your holes. So get your piece of tape and put it so that the string is secure. So go about three quarters of the way down. Hot, make it tight. Okay. And then you just lift and, and the chalk will leave a mark. And this is your center line. It's really convenient. So you know. So at this point, you can see already just how the chalk made mm, perfect center line. <clears throat> wipe it off easy too. <clears throat> so with your marker, mark the whole positioning at the chalk mark. All right, so the first hole, I'm gonna give you these measurements. I'll leave them at the bottom. Uh, in, in the description so you could see. But to describe, Fifth hole from the Utaguchi is thirty nine centimeters. Fourth hole is forty seven point four centimeters. Third hole. Sorry, that's uh, fourth hole is uh, uh, 38.5. Sorry, third hole is 47.3. Second hole is 58.7 centimeters from the Otoguchi, and the first hole is. 66 centimeters and the fifth hole back hole is 36 centimeters from the Utaguchi so mark mark those okay So now that we got those holes marked, I want to protect those holes so it doesn't be a mark. Actually, you could have put painter's tape at the top. I should, should have done that before. Painter's tape. Okay. 
so that the holes stay, you don't lose the mark. Now that we got that, the next step is to pop out the fushi. So, So the fushi are important. So for the utaguchi or the blowing hole, you want to keep that fushi intact as much because that helps with the feeling of the mouth, because the mouth support. So the tool you need is this really nice hand drill, which I could only find in Japan. But you could use um, like a drill and just uh, gently drill a hole. So when you drill, put your initial uh, opening of the utaguchi or your mouth hole, you want to um, make the hole close to the upper end of the bamboo so that you save a lot of the fushi material. So the good thing about these hand drills is that they have a little screw at the end and it, you can control how much uh, drill is going in. It's, it's very uh, nice. So don't take too much pushy off. So the next step is the next there's a for this piece of bamboo there is one two three four five nodes that we have to punch out so we can start with that one uh, the top and then we'll, we'll uh, do the bottom the bottom you can just take out of everything very uh, it's not that important Just the top, first top when you want to save the bushy for your mouth. Okay, those two are popped out. So the next is the bottom bushy, and we have an, these tools, you know, they're typically for shakuhachi making, but I understand that a lot of people don't have these tools. So you can use any like metal rod and just <laughs> punch out the nodes with this. We're not making shakuhachi, so <laughs> no problem. We've already punched out two. Now we have this other, this type of um, rasp also a shakuhachi making tool, not essential, but refining wise, you want to get the bore as smooth as possible. And this beautiful rasp, it really takes out all the edge of the fushis or the nose. And you can tell, you can hear me shaving the sides, getting those fushis out. really convenient. Okay, so that's really good. So for I have two diameters for these long-handed drills. I have a thinner one 
and then a, a, a thicker one or a, yeah and so the the more thinner one is just for your information millimeter wise is about 14 14 millimeters diameter and the thicker one is Eighteen. Fourteen and eighteen. <clears throat> so when we make uh, Chaparachi, we start with the thinner one and then just increase the thicker one. So for the upper end of this tank on, we want to use the thinner one because we're entering this smaller one is also the same size as this one. It's a 14 millimeter. So we're entering into that 14 millimeter easily. And of course, be careful with the fushi of the mouth. You know, just gently pushed it. All right. popped out the fushis. So, I have a thinner rasp that we use to enter that hole. We have a thinner rasp. <clears throat> sufficient. Nice. And now it's hollow. Okay. Next step is the creation of the Utaguchi. The blowing edge. Okay, so for my flutes, I like to create a mouthpiece protector, so I save about an, an inch uh, off the top, just below, just above the utaguchi that I'm going to make. And then I use, um, later I'll show you my process of making that, but just to like to let you know that I'm going to be cutting that one inch off right now because I have to make my Utaguchi. Okay, so here we go with our hacksaw and um, yeah, make sure you, there for this bamboo there's two lips. Uh, uh, the bottom one, the top one. So we, for the Utaguchi, you want to cut just above or on that second lip of the, of the, uh, just at the Fushi area. So that's going to be your cut guide. It's the top of the lip. So that's your, ga your gauge. You don't really need to just make the cut line. Upper lip, 
of make your Utaguchi protector. Right. So now that we're we have close to the mouth opening, you want to make another mark where you marked your original center line. So mark it down the horizontal axis. Got your center line that you marked earlier, then make a horizontal axis. Okay, so you have your line going straight down like that. Yeah. Okay, so now we have to get, oops, I'm not prepared, I'm sorry. edge one of these little plastic ones will do and th this process is a very very uh, sim same as shakuhachi making so with the uh, ver vertical axis did I say horizontal? <laughs> so vertical axis make it perfectly down the center okay. <clears throat> you want to make you want to match that the vertical line down. Oh, it's hard to, to show you because of this, but anyways, at the top lip, what we're going to do is we're going to be making a horizontal line at the bottom of the, the inner diameter of the bamboo. There we go. But it has to be perfectly, perfectly perpendicular. <laughs> perfectly perpendicular. <laughs> so make that line the horizontal line perfectly perpendicular to the bottom of the upper lip of the bamboo okay I'll give you what it looks like so I'll show you did you see that can you see that perpendicular horizontal and vertical bam that's where you're going to be that's where we're going to be cutting down for the utaguchi okay now we take our hacksaw our saw and then we cut about 30 degrees angle down straight down okay so I've done this so many times I know I could feel, but you can you can use a one of these, I'll show you. It's an angle uh, a ruler. So you can see the you know what angle you're 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 coming at. So 30 degrees is about thirty degrees is there. So that angle is ideal for uh, this kind of loop. Thirty-five no problem either. either. <coughs> so you want to cut straight down that line. So if you, 
you can't see well, use goggles. I usually use goggles. I'm okay now, but uh, I usually use goggles when I'm in my workshop. Okay. So make sure. So you got conditioning. Have a good, good control. Here we go cutting straight down. Thirty degrees. Just follow that line. <clears throat> Short stroke. So this thing, this sliver of bamboo that we just cut off, that's going to be part of your Utaguchi protector. And it's going to fit perfectly on the, where we just cut that bamboo off. Okay, so that's it. That We're almost there. So next step is we have to file down that the inner lip of the opening of the bamboo. That's going to give us our Itaguchi. So first we, we can start off with a file like this. And uh, I have a finer file inside, which I'll... <laughs> Different grades of files. These rat tail files work really great for hand job. <laughs> Not that guy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, and then we have different uh, files for, yes, this type of work. Uh, so I have a really thick one for taking out a lot of meat, and then the thinner one for more finer detail. So for this one, let's use the rough rat rat's tail to take out a lot of the meat. Don't take out too much because we want to have control over the size of the hole, right? So really just slowly grasp away and later I'm going to give you the dimensions of the, the uh, mouth opening which is very important this part of the fluid is the most understated um, part of the instrument I it's super important underestimated Should be flat. Should be flat. There shouldn't be any lip on the Utaguchi area. It should be flat to the inner surface of the bamboo. Okay. That's good enough for now. Now take your bigger, thicker rasp. Shave a little bit. Put the Gucci down. Just 
So there's specific dimensions for the mouth, chin rest, and all that. And we're gonna go into that a little later. So I'm just gonna do a quick rough job. And then we're gonna blow into it and see what it sounds like. that back chin rest going about twenty degrees uh, angle down. This part of the of the, the work is just experience. How to make the best chin mouth rest important in the sound. This is basic shakuhachi stuff. So we're forming the Utaguchi right now, and the depth of the, the Utaguchi is also very important, and I will go into that in detail later. But I just, the sun is going down really quick, so I just want to finish this off for the day, and let you listen to the initial sound of this tank on. I need my optical advisors. Barely see this. Okay, it's all, uh, I'm gonna close it up now, but I just wanna finish it off with the sound of the initial Tenkan without the holes. So this is the, this is the sound of it. See you in the next video. Take care. If you uh, want to subscribe to my, my channel, please do. Help a lot. And uh, see you take see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>